everyone good evening thanks for joining in for uh, pm school start session so uh, start pm school start session uh, is all about uh, getting industry uh, leaders in the product management domain to come and share their wisdom and knowledge with us uh, 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 you know which they experience in their own career uh, or in their own journey as being uh, product managers and product leaders in, in the industry uh, and uh, we have when we have these sessions uh, every few weeks um, and uh, please uh, you know tune in to uh, our, either our linkedin page or subscribe to our newsletter to be uh, informed about these events uh, in the near future so with that i uh, will do a quick introduction about aditi the, uh, before handing it over to her uh, so aditi has uh, been with pm school uh, and has been a part of uh, the star session uh, in the past as well where uh, she's talked about uh, building uh, applications uh, using uh, no code uh, tools uh, today she's going to bring in another interesting topic uh, to share with everyone uh, which is uh, uh, specifically about artificial intelligence and and how uh, ai can be used uh, in our jobs uh, as uh, product managers and in the realm of product management itself. Uh, with that, I hand it over to Aditi. Thanks a lot, Kushal, and um, really appreciate um, PM School hosting me. Um, always a pleasure to be a part of it. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining today. Um, I hope everyone's on mute, otherwise it's just a lot of noise. But yeah, as I was saying, thank you uh, so much for joining today. Um, I am sure you all have like a long working day and despite that you all are here, which is a great thing as it means that you are super curious about AI, that you are taking time on a weekday to, um, you know, learn about it. So um, I'm really excited to, um, you know, talk to you all and uh, we'll try to keep it as interactive as possible. Um, okay, so let me start with sharing my screen. Um, let me know once you can see it. Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. So uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, you all must have noticed there's a lot of talk about AI happening lately. Uh, whenever you open LinkedIn or Twitter, or even, you know, you're just talking with a bunch of friends. Um, AI just seems to pop up as one of the key conversation topics. And, um, you know, that is why, um, you know, this session is called Catching Up With AI because there is so much content online present today that, in fact, there is a lot of catching up to do. And especially for product managers, because if we are not keeping up with what's happening in the tech world, then I think we are behind. So we should definitely be um, in touch with whatever technology advancements are happening. Um, but, you know, the question is, did... Did all this only happen in the last couple of months? Uh, is that true? Is AI that new? And, um, you know, I'll tell you the answer. It's not. In fact, you know, the term artificial intelligence was um, coined at least like 60 years back and like all the practical work that has been happening in this field has been happening for um, over seven, six, seven decades now, which is a long time. So why only people are talking about it now? And why not before? Um, so, you know, to understand all these things and to answer these questions, we what we need to do is understand the history of AI and why does it matter? Like why knowing the history of AI matters? So that is the first agenda in today's session. Um, the second one is understanding what LLMs are. Don't worry if you don't, you haven't heard this term before, because we are going to start from very basic and go into, um, you know, slight depth of technicality around it. Uh, then we'll understand the Gen AI landscape because um, that is something everyone has been talking about, and it's important to know because um, that is directly linked to how you can leverage AI in your day-to-day -day work as a product manager and also build products around it. Uh, and lastly, we'll 
uh, if time permits, I hope it does. We'll play around with a cool tool called Mid Journey. Um, so yeah, that's what we have as agenda for today's session. And uh, yeah, we'll start with talking about the history. But uh, I don't want to, you know, bore you folks by just talking about what happened like 60 years back and what has been happening since then. But, um, you know, my question to you is that um, most of us, I'm assuming, has heard about chat GPT. Uh, but there is more than meets the eye over here because, um, you know, today somehow uh, for a non-technical person who is probably not too much involved in the field of AI, um, AI and chat GPT have become synonymous but that's kind of incorrect because there is so much more that has been done in this field and there is so much more that has to be done. But the interesting thing to understand here is why did chat GPT become so successful that everyone knows about it? In fact, um, interestingly, our parents' generation also knows about it. I mean, they didn't know about other technologies, but knowing about something like this and it becoming like a mass market product, how did this happen? Um, so two reasons mainly. The first one is that it's it it's a really, really good product. Like uh, the way ChatGPT understands natural language and interacts with a person in that natural language is really good. So you feel like you are talking to a human. And the second reason why this happened was it was um, distributed to the mass market. Like people had access to use it without any, without knowing any engineering, uh, without having any engineering capabilities, they could just go and play around with this product. So in the past, even if you have had similar models where um, people were using AI to process natural language and give outputs in natural language. They were limited to SaaS tools. Consumers didn't have access to it, or they didn't even know if, you know, whatever output they are getting is out of AI. Um, so that is what uh, happened with Chat GPT. Um, now, the important thing here. Um, that we should understand is what led to this, like what was the technology behind it? Because fundamentally as a product manager, if you don't understand the tech behind it, you don't necessarily have to write code, but if you don't understand the tech behind it, you will not know what are the possibilities and limitations of a particular technology. So unless you go deep into the, um, how it works of any, um, you know, new technique or technology it's very difficult to be able to use it and build products using it at scale um so moving ahead like i said let's talk a bit about history of ai uh the term was coined like 60 years back and practical work at least the practical work on ai has been happening since then um so then why are people talking about it only now? Or at least why are so many people talking about it right now? Um, so, you know, what happens usually here is that uh, if you look at history of AI, uh, one of the insights you would immediately have is that AI hasn't progressed in straight lines, but has been a roller coaster. Someone invents a new technique. The technique leads to rapid progress. Scientists are impressed and excited. They promise that progress will only accelerate. Major milestones are met. Uh, new feats are achieved um, in a decade. And you know the future looks golden until the technique runs into trouble or faces a roadblock. What happens then is the progress slows down altogether. Money moves out of that market, goes into a market where you see more growth. For example, previously people were talking a lot about Web3 and blockchain. Um, and, you know, talent follows money. Uh, so people who were building, let's say, uh, in the X field now move to the Y field because obviously there is more growth over there. 
uh, and everyone who was like widely optimistic about the predictions in the future, um, you know, they start to be um, skeptical and predictions look ridiculous. And, you know, there's like a, you could say AI passes into a winter. And this is actually true for any innovative field, right? Um, but then again, a new technique is invented and the cycle cranks up again and, you know, uh, people are excited again. So the new technique that got um, us here where we are today talking about um, things like chat GPT, things like mid journey, stable diffusion, um, that technique is LLMs and transformers. And that is what we are going to understand how it works so that uh, after today's session, if somebody tells you that, hey, can you explain me what's the technology behind chat GPT? You can explain it um, in simple terms. Um, you can explain it to a five-year-old. But basically, by end of it, you will know how it works. And more importantly, you will know what you can do with it as a product manager. Okay, so let's understand LLMs or large language models. But before that, let's understand what are language models. We'll get to the large part later. So um, I am assuming all of you understand the math behind probability and um, you know it helps you predict uh, things. What are the odds of X happening given Y circumstances? Something like that, right? What are the odds of it raining tomorrow in Bangalore? There is some algorithm predicting it. Um, uh, hey, please. I think someone is drawing annotations. Please, can you avoid doing that on the slide? Uh, and if possible, can we disable it? Sure. I'll do that. Awesome. Thank you. So uh, language models are prob probabilistic models designed to identify learn statistical patterns in natural language. What does this mean? When everything I've been telling you, right, it's speech. Since like probably last uh, 20 minutes I've been speaking, it's all speech, maybe converted into text. Can you convert this into math somehow? Um, because computers understand maths, they don't understand text or speech. So basically, uh, these models are designed in a way that, um, you know, they convert our text, each and every word in our text into some kind of math, and we'll get into it. Um, and then use probability to determine what is the word that's going to come next in my sentence. Um, for humans, the brain does it like every sentence that I'm forming. It's because I understand English language and have a sense of grammar. So my brain processes what I really want to communicate here. Similarly, a computer does it over here and it does it by um, predicting what's the best word that should uh, succeed the previous one. Um, so yeah, chat GPT, in fact, is also built on a language model, a large language model. Um, and the whole point of it is to, you know, excel in uh, various cognitive tasks that involve natural language. So um, that is also the reason when you, if you guys have used um, chat GPT, you see that it's like a, every every word is being typed out because the model is predicting what word should come after the previous ones. It's not like it generates the paragraph at one go. Um, so that's what, la that's what language models are. And uh, like I said, they are based on um, you know probability. So it's a lot like filling the blanks. So you train this model using a neural network which so what is a neural network let's understand that first um it's it so since it's called neural network you can imagine that it's somewhat similar to how neurons work in our brains 
so you know that's that's one way to uh, make machine learning and ai sound like um, human intelligence but essentially uh, you know they basically are a network uh, which tries to replicate how information is transmitted um and within within a human brain and over here what happens is a model is trained um sorry was someone saying something okay uh so here a model is trained with um data um uh, you know let's say from the internet and what the model essentially has to do is somehow fill in the blanks so it's like you know the color of the sky is and then the model predicts that blue is um of the highest probability and gives it as the output and um then this so this is like a generic or foundational model then this uh, you know similar kind of model is trained for specific use cases and it keeps getting better with time uh, due to something called as rlhf which reinforcement learning using human feedback uh, which means that you know every time you talk to the model or um, you know there is more data and more interaction happening it gets better with time uh, due to human feedback so we understood what is a uh, language model let's talk about um you know what we see here in the image so this is a simple neural network consisting of three layers the nodes or you may say neurons are represented by circles and the connection between the nodes are you know the lines and also it also represents how data is flowing from one node to the other um and you know every um every connection is assigned a numerical value which represents something called a parameter um and that numerical value or the number of parameters define the strength of signal passed being or information passed uh between these nodes so this is like just three layers let's look at a more complex neural network look at this image just imagine the number of connections that means um the more the number of connections the more the parameters the stronger the neural network is right this one is particularly of with 100 nodes and 1842 parameters um so yeah um these kind of neural nets are actually used in a model to you know train data and make sense out of it um but one of the biggest breakthroughs that happened recently because of which you know these language models work so well uh then you know what we had previously was transformers or also called as king of ai architecture which is um which is fundamentally based on two concepts that every word in the natural language is um trans translated into a vector so it is represented mathematically and has a relationship with adjacent words so no word is looked at um in isolation so there is always a relationship established between these words uh which makes uh you know the art of guessing over here that you know what word should come after uh the previous one much easier because there is shared context so having that shared context uh between these words is very important and the second thing that works out really well here or is the foundation of a transformer is the attention mechanisms um which means that every after every word is converted to a vector they also have scores or weights based on how important or relevant they are to a particular task so you know if you have used chat gpt and you have given a prompt related to a certain context let's say 
you said that um you know act like a senior product manager um and write a prd on uh, building a chatbot for a particular use case so now here what will happen is the transformer will help in making sense of each and every word but in relation with all the other words given and also give like attention to the important ones like be a senior product manager so that context matters and writing the prd for a particular use case so um, exactly how a human brain would think right you would pick the important things out of someone some some narration made to you and try to make sense out of it um so after this what happens is transformers this architecture works on a encoder decoder um you know um system and if you are you know from an engineering background you would understand that is how most systems work uh, there's an encoder which will translate uh words to vectors so into their mathematical representation um and you know then process it make sense out of it and decoder will then change the mathematical representation to again natural language um so yeah now after transformers came into existence um the language models became much powerful because um of you know just the two reasons i mentioned right now the word embeddings and uh attention mechanisms so um this is these two things are the main reason why everyone has been um talking about ai lately because um you know the the llm have been giving great outputs and this new technique is something that has started the cycle so remember how at the beginning i mentioned that there is every time there's a new technique a cycle starts people are excited about it until a roadblock is hit so we are yet to face that roadblock uh, people who are experts in this area are already anticipating it um but i'll get to it towards the end so uh, at a high level we have understood like how llms work what i would recommend to everyone is you know now that you have got a nugget into understanding what llms are go go back read about it um you know this is like literally just touching the tip of the iceberg or even the tip of the tip of the iceberg to be honest there is so so much more um and you can't learn it in a day people who have been uh working in this field have been doing it for like at least at least half a decade to get to successful outputs um moving ahead you can look at this um representation so um remember how we discussed that parameters def determine how strong a model is because it represents how strong the data is flowing through the um neural network so some of the largest so you know look at here this gpt3 which is trained on like 175 billion parameters and then there are some new um models uh like megaton turing and google spam that have already surpassed 5 billion parameters and um in the last 4 years size of llms have repeatedly doubled every 3.5 months um so you know that has been a really really good growth um but the question you can go back and ask is how large can large language models get like there is a limit to it and that is one of the roadblocks that could be hit in this space so it's definitely an interesting question to dig deeper into um okay now that we understand one concept in depth let's talk about some broader areas what's actually happening in the gen ai space we understood how things are working let's also understand uh what's happening at different layers of uh this industry so at the most uh foundational layer like or rather at 
the most basic layer. We have the semiconductor layer, uh, which is like hardware companies like NVIDIA or Google, um, which, uh, which support the computation of these models. So, you know, so much data, so much complexity, you definitely need very, very, very exclusive and good hardware to run um, such algorithms, right? So semiconductor layer is a layer which is like companies that are producing such hardware. You know, like I said, for example, Google's TPU is there. Um, foundational layer lies on top of this semiconductor layer, which means that it is the models that we spoke about. So open AI, mid journey, uh, you know, anthropic, these are the companies which are building uh, models today and um, you know, running on top of the semiconductor layer. Um, then there is a platform layer. Um, but before I explain what is platform layer, I'll talk about the application layer because that way it's easier to understand. So application layer is uh, for companies that are leveraging the models to build on top of it. So let's say you built a chatbot for your customer support using uh, GPT-3 or GPT-3.5 or 4, whatever, um, you, are, you fall in the application layer because you are using these models for a very specific use case, uh, or you are um, you know, producing audio for dubbing into different languages using AI that is also uh, application layer. Um, now, platform layer lies between these two layers, and what it helps is with, you know, makes it easier to use uh, these models. Um, so deployment, monitoring, experimentation are the kind of things that you, that companies lying in this layer uh, help with. So you could call it MLOps or LLMOps companies. Uh, similar to how you have in the engineering um, cycle um, where you have companies like Sentry for alerting and monitoring. Um, it's very similar to that. So um, that is the Gen AI landscape. And, you know, most of the companies or most of the tools that you might be hearing about a lot online fall in the application layer. So Either there's a lot of talk about foundational layer models, or there are a lot of talk, there's a lot of talk about what tools are being in the application layer. And as a product manager, you can like make use of both. Um, but um, question is how? Like we kind of went deep into one concept, which was large language models, and we understood a wider concept, which is Gen AI landscape. But what does all this mean for a product manager? Um, by the way, this turtle who is kind of programming over here, this image is generated using AI. So um, yeah, and I'll also like towards the end of the session show you how. Uh, but I kind of found it like super cute thanks to what AI can do. So two things, right? First is adding intelligence intelligently. What does this really mean? It means that um, now as a product manager, when you are building any product or any feature, you need to ask yourself this question repeatedly that, can I add a layer of intelligence to this? Because if you will not, someone else will. Maybe someone else in your company will, or maybe your competitors will. Um, and that will make you go far behind in the race. So every product that you build, uh, you need to think, is there a layer of intelligence that could be added? So just to give you an example, if you were working as a PM for customer support two years back, and you had to build a chatbot, you would just simply, you know, build a messaging experience, put some FAQs, maybe build contextual help so people know, uh, so customer support agents know where the customer is coming from and what is their query. But today, if today you are building a customer support experience and you are not thinking about how to make it intelligent using AI, 
your experience will lag um and it will you will you will be far behind in the journey so every product that you think of building you have to think about adding intelligence to it that's the only way to catch up with ai um maybe another example could be let's say you are building a sales crm um can you build an intelligent recommendation system so that people know uh, which lead to reach out to people know what content to share what kind of cold email to write uh, how should the outreach tone be like if you are not suggesting those things if you are not helping your end user to reach their goal faster um then then that's a concern right so the fundamental idea here is that can you use ai to give a better experience to your customer and to make your customers smarter you know so that's that's one side of it the other part is making yourself smarter at your work so how do you get fast at what you do using ai so there is a lot of work that you can actually automate and also you know be a full stack person let's say if you were depending on a content writer at work to give you copy for let's say a landing page you were building you can today totally go use chat gpt or any of those tools which are generating contextual content give it a prompt generate it instead of waiting for someone else to do it for you and um you know you might just question yourself that if i already have a content writer why should i do their job so it's not about doing someone else's job but it's about uh being self sufficient as a product manager and removing block removing blockers as soon as possible so if that's your uh foundation that you know you want to remove blockers and you want to ship things faster um there are a lot of ai tools to do and could have spoken about a few ai tools uh but i consciously would refrain from doing that because there are so many that you should probably go um and discover them yourselves and even if i start recommending five tools for a particular use case today there will be five more tomorrow so uh you know be active on twitter and linkedin keep um checking what's new and you know the best best place to keep a track of what new tools are coming is product hunt uh people definitely launch there so you you know one of the things i suggest people to do is um just install the product hunt chrome extension so every time you open a new tab you will automatically see what are the new tools that launched today that way you'll naturally keep a tab at what's happening uh but yeah i think it has to be a daily habit inculcated um in a person or in a product manager's life to ask these two questions repeatedly how can i make my users smarter using ai and how can i get faster using ai at my work and if you are constantly asking these questions then you yourself will find the answer and you know use interesting tools to do it um cool so um since we have time um we will go and use another tool which is called mid journey and um i'll show you what it can do so you know how we spoke about a language model uh, and gpt3 gpt4 being um you know one of those um like it it works on um like chat gpt works on uh, these models and um there are other models as well so uh, there's something called diffuse fusion model and definitely go um read about it and to you know just spark the curiosity within within you folks um i show you how it works so yeah let's go and play with mid journey um so yeah that that was the total i was uh, talking about so basically what this tool does it you give it a prompt and based on that prompt um it understands the natural language that you are trying to communicate it with and it generates a image based on it 
and that image may or may have never that image like in all probability may have never existed in the internet so it's actually like um you know creating that image for you based on the prompt you gave and prompts are essentially um you know a way to nudge a model to explain them what you really want so let's try something um so how it works it it um it it's basically an api integrated with discord so it's a discord bot and you use a command here which is imagine you use imagine and then you give a prompt which is let's say since we are talking about turtles um turtle being friendly with a scuba diver inside the ocean let's see what happens also while this is so as you can see this is now generating images and it's like a step wise process so it's not like it just pulled out images from internet that's not how it happens and folks while these images are getting generated if you want me to try a prompt here just put it on the chat i will um, definitely generate those images for you so feel free to suggest prompts in the chat while this is getting generated So we are seventy eight percent there. <laughs> okay, Kushagra wants astronaut in the ocean. Oh, I like what Jitesh has written. I'll do both. Don't worry. Uh, okay, so we have our images. I really like the fourth one. This is so cute. They're kind of shaking hands. um so basically you can so this u1 u2 u3 u4 means you can um upscale an image so basically uh, mid journey always um generates four images and you can select one of those to upscale and then download it or if you want variations let's say you liked the first one particularly if you want more variations of similar types so that mid journey understands that okay you want something like this it will iterate on it um let's try what jitesh mentioned um let's see if my journey can do this or not and i'll also uh prompt what nishant has mentioned I think the Spider Man one is going to be hilarious. Let's see. Oops, <laughs> I can only already see the third one looking. Oh, the second one also kind of looking fun. wow
which one do you like nishant out of the four this one is kind of what is this guy doing here okay these are like really cool images um uh, we don't have kushagras i don't know why mid journey is not able to generate something so simple um yeah but i think these two are in getting generated sometimes it just lags so yeah um my point here was to show that you know ai is also fun so sometimes when you're doing a lot of boring reading you can just play around with these tools um and now that you know what it can do for you i would definitely push all of you to go and read how diffusion models work and what's the you know uh, tech behind it you already understood how chat gpt works now the next step is to understand how a tool like mid journey works so definitely do that and uh, so nishan said he likes the first and third one i'll actually just go ahead and um create variations of the third one okay and we have obama also coming up here this is also going to be interesting kushagra i'm sorry i don't know why mid journey is refusing to do your prompt so you uh, will have to pay for this tool mid journey is not free you can just go to mid journey's website uh yeah and from there you can get it like you'll have to subscribe to it oh okay the first one definitely looks like a uh, indian road um the fourth one looks like he is at kabban park for some reason uh, <laughs> so we do have barack obama in and driving on an indian road or royal enfield wow um we still don't have the astronaut in the ocean i think you might just want to go and listen to the song um yeah but uh, i mean kushal you did post the link to the bot but you might have to um, like you'll have to pay for it so that's the caveat like they do have free trials but right now because the volume is so high they are not supporting it but anyways it's just like 10 dollars for a month so it's you can like if you want to try it it's definitely worth doing it. cool um i think this has intrigued you all enough to go and read more about ai and also um implement in it in your day to day lives uh with that note i'll end this session and thank you all for you know showing up today and attending this really appreciate it thanks for that uh, aditi quite an insight insightful session uh especially for folks who are new to all the advances uh, or uh, uh, new to the history behind uh, some of these most popular te uh, ai technologies today uh, we still do have some time to answer any questions uh, yeah. you guys might have uh, folks so you can uh, drop in your questions on uh, the channel uh, chat uh, window itself or you can unmute yourself and then um, uh ask us the question directly yes for sure feel free to ask questions no any question any tool for videos yeah so actually there are a lot of tools uh, so um in in the video category also there are many things right 
there are tools that can create demo videos for you there are tools um you know that can um help you uh record videos behind a virtual person so you know you just give your photo and then you give the speech and then um it will just generate the video and you will not have to like talk and record the entire video so there are such tools as well um there are also tools that um repurpose content so if you put a long form video it will um you know convert it to short form reels without you having to figure out which part of um the whole video was most meaningful to be shared as a short form video so there are a lot of such tools the best way is just go on twitter or google and put your use case i want to you know let's say create demo videos using ai bunch of tools will pop up so yeah i hope that answered your question. more questions folks <laughs> good question pallavi you should definitely ask this to chat gpt but there are good resources um i will actually share one here you can read this blog it's a good starting point and uh, yeah um ask chat gpt cool uh any any further questions uh, everyone all right i think uh with this okay we have one more question uh what's your opinion on builder.ai's ai product uh, manager um yeah do you want me to uh, elaborate I, i'd be happy doing that so uh, i recently was go going through this uh, where they they're saying that they they are developing trying to develop an ai product manager basically with someone who takes input from clients you know, understand what kind of product they want to build then do build all the mechanism for uh, taking user feedbacks doing research creating user person generating user personas right technology architecture to support that kind of product so uh, what are your opinion so i mean will it be working as a copilot for product managers in future or uh, how will ai affect uh, your i mean anyone's job in the in the product field? sure so i think um, it's also important how an org defines the product manager's role so if i were to define it i would definitely start with something like a uh, product discovery uh, sorry problem discovery is the most important part that a product manager has to do um and i think um that is something ai can't replace today but if you have a clear solution in mind and you want to just draft it and scope it out and you know just um get you know do secondary research get information from the internet that is already existing because these models are again trained on information that's uh, already available on the internet online it's not trained on a uh, data like um you know user research you would do in person right so those things ca can't be replaced so it 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 is an aid but it will never 100% replace what a pm does yep. but again if a org thinks that a product manager's job is only limited to writing a prd then that's a problem like if that is the only job that being spoken about here that's a problem but there is you know a pm's role is far more than that it is about getting um teams together bringing alignment um, i mean unless you have a robot running around in the office and getting alignment with people like i don't see it being 
a replacement, but it will make a PM's life much easier. So a lot of the job that doesn't require creative skill and uh, uh, emotional intelligence can be done by AI. So that is why when I said that, how should you incorporate it in your day-to-day -day life? It's definitely something you should think about. And it's also more of a personal choice, like as a PM, what part of your workflows you would want to automate. So that's how I would put it. Like um, it will, it will reduce, uh, it will not, eliminate a product manager's role but it it will improve productivity of a product manager which means that pms will have more time to focus on more problems which means we will need lesser pms in future and it's true for every role for we'll need lesser developers we'll need lesser pm we'll need like less of everything because people's productivity will increase okay great Th thanks for that Sure. Cool. Cool. I uh, think... Any final questions, folks? I think I think there's a lot uh, shared. I'm pretty sure folks would be uh, you all would be interested in checking out these tools first. Um, all right. I think uh, with that we'll end today's session. Thanks, Aditi. This was quite insightful. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of takeaways for everyone uh, who are exploring this field and uh, constantly exploring ways to uh, creati creatively use uh, these tools in uh, in your day-to-day -day lives, uh, especially uh, uh, in the role of, uh, obviously, uh, custodians of a product, which is being, which is a, being a product manager. Uh, although uh, the best uh, couple of uh, things from my side, the best way to... Um, uh, make best use of these tools is to actually pick a problem statement and then you know see how we can you know use them uh, to solve them uh, solve these problem statements and uh, always uh, uh, try to find out use cases uh, within your own day-to-day -day activities which you can automate which you can replace uh, by these tools so that's the best way to get a hang of uh, how how we can creatively use uh, tools like chat gpt uh, on mid journey okay so that uh, I'll end today's session. Thanks, Aditi. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, please uh, keep an eye out for posts which go out for the future star sessions uh, on our LinkedIn uh, or Twitter pages. And if you're more, if you're curious to know more about uh, PM School itself, do reach out to us. Our, our website is pmschool.io. And uh, yeah, with that, we end today's session. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks again. Thanks Aditi. a lot, Kushal. And thanks everyone for joining in today. Bye. Bye and uh, take care, everyone.